Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to the online uh, pericyclic course. So today we'll discuss the electrocyclic reactions, which is a type of pericyclic reactions. So electrocyclic reactions are categorized into two types. One is electrocyclic ring closure reaction, where the open chain molecule is turning into a cyclic molecule. The reverse of this is the electrocyclic ring opening reaction, where a cyclic molecule will be turning into an open sign molecule. So the electrocyclic ring closure reactions and electrocyclic ring opening reaction. So the electrocyclic ring closure reaction can be defined as the involvement of an acyclic conjugated polyene system. The involvement of an acyclic conjugated polyene system in developing a new sigma bond, in developing a new sigma, sigma bond via the cyclic reorganization of the pi electrons, via the cyclic reorganization of the pi electrons at the end producing a cyclic molecule, at the end producing a cyclic molecule is called as electrocyclic ring closure reaction. So what is happening here means if you are involving an acyclic, this is open chain molecule, acyclic conjugated, this is in conjugation, the pi electrons are in conjugation, so a diene system. So this may be a diene, triene, tetraene or polyene okay so for example we are discussing the diene system now this is an acyclic conjugated diene system which via a cyclic reorganization so cyclic reorganization where the pi electrons are slowly showing the cyclic reorganization and producing a new sigma bond so this side, the terminal carbon atoms, this is C1, C2, C3 and C4. So the terminal carbon atoms C1 and C4, if you observe it clearly, so are involved in the generation of a new sigma bond via the cyclic reorganization of the pi electrons. So this becomes the cyclic transition state and after this, you will see a cyclic molecule with a newly formed sigma bond. So this is the newly formed sigma bond, right. So we call this as electrocyclic ring closure reaction. As already discussed in the previous classes, so most of the pericyclic reactions are reversible in nature. Most of the pericyclic reactions are reversible in nature. Therefore, the product which you are seeing at the right hand side has an every chance to get back to the reactant molecule, right. So how it is going back again because of the cyclic reorganization of the electrons. So it will give you the cyclic transition state and you will get the reactant molecule. So these reactions are reversible in nature. So reversible in nature. The forward reaction which is named 1 is this electrocyclic ring closure reaction whereas the backward reaction which is named 2 is the electrocyclic ring opening reaction. Yeah, in this uh, slide you can also see the conversion of the 1,3 biota diene into the cyclobutene molecule 
where the formation of a new sigma bond is taking place between C1 and C4 terminal carbon atoms via the cyclic reorganization of the pi electrons. In the cyclic transition state shown on the arrow, so what you can observe is the conversion of uh, the pi bond, pi electrons into a sigma bond is shown with a different color. At the end of the reaction, you can also see uh, the newly formed sigma bond in the red color, highlighted in the red color. Coming to the another example 1,3,5 hexatriene where the cyclic reorganization of the pi electrons is also shown with the help of the arrow marks here. So in the cyclic transition state you can observe uh, the formation the partial formation of the sigma bond between C1 and C6 uh, terminal carbon atoms and at the end of the reaction the clearly uh, marked uh, red color bond indicates the newly formed sigma bond. Okay. For any molecule to perform the electrocyclic reactions, the first requirement is the acyclic molecule should be in conjugation. The acyclic molecule should be in conjugation. And next one, the terminal carbon atoms of this conjugated system, these terminal carbon atoms of the conjugated systems must be close to each other, must be close to each other. So, if the terminal carbon atoms are close to each other, then they will get the flexibility of extending themselves to form a new sigma bond, new sigma bond. So, the example what we have taken here is the butadiene molecule and butadiene can exist in two different forms. One is S cis form, this is the current uh, one S cis form and it can also be seen in this form. So, this is S trans form, the S cis form and S trans form, okay. So, the carbon carbon single bond here C1, C2, C3 and C4. This is C1, C2, C3 and C4. If you see in the first case the S cis form, the carbon C1 and the carbon C4 which are the terminal carbon atoms are close to each other, close to each other. That is there is an every possibility of these two carbon atoms to involve in the formation of a new sigma bond. Whereas in the S trans form if you observe it the first carbon atom C1 and the last carbon atom C4 which are the terminal carbon atoms are away from each other. So, it is quite difficult for such kind of conformation to easily participate in the electrocyclic reactions, ring closure reactions. But the good thing is these are interconvertible. You just give some amount of energy. So, this carbon-carbon bond rotation takes place between C2 and C3 and it gives readily the S cis form which can happily undergo the electrocyclic ring closure reactions. So, for any molecule, the acyclic conjugated polyene system should be in S cis form so that the terminal carbon atoms can come in contact with each other to develop a new sigma bond. Yeah, one thing we need to thoroughly understand here and observe here is so, in the case of 1,3,5 hexatriene, as similar to that of the 1,3 butadiene, so when uh, this 1,3 butadiene is in S cis form only, the terminal carbon atoms are close to each other then it allows the reorganization of the pi electrons and thereafter the formation of a new sigma bond. Similarly, in the case of 1,3,5 hexatriene, so the C3, C4 carbon atoms should be in Z configuration, right. So that means cis form. So and at the same time, the relationship between C2 and C3 should also be sin as well as C4 and uh, C5 should also be sin as a result of which the 4n plus 2 pi electron system that means it is involving the 6 pi electrons. So, will involve in the electrocyclic reaction via the cyclic transition state and results in the formation of cyclohexadiene and the newly formed sigma bond can be seen in the highlighted color here. If in case the relation between C2 and C3 is anti or the relation between C4 and C5 is also anti then 
the molecule though c3c4 carbon atoms in z configuration cannot participate in the 4n plus 2 pi electron uh, electrocyclization reaction so that is what is clearly shown in this slide that when one of the relationships between c2 c3 or either c4 c5 is anti so the possibility of the electrocyclic reaction is not seen at the normal conditions okay and then uh, the electrocyclic reactions are again categorized into two types so one is uh, based on the ring opening and the ring closing type so that we have discussed now and the other type of categorization is based on the involvement of number of pi electrons involvement of number of pi electrons if you reconsider the same example 1 comma 3 butadiene so it is showing a transition state where two pi bonds are involved right so this is the cyclic transition state so for two pi bonds how many electrons pi electrons are there 2 plus 2 4 pi electrons are there so therefore it is considered as 4n pi electron system 4n pi electron system so which will give you this product right so if you consider this example which is 1 2 3 4 5 6 1 comma 3 comma 5 hexatriene if you consider this example 1 comma 3 comma 5 hexatriene it will also generate the cyclic molecule via the stable cyclic transition state a six membered cyclic transition state is observed here if you see here how many pi electrons are involved yes correct six number of pi electrons are involved these type of systems are categorized as 4n plus 2 4n plus 2 system electron systems so as we are always discussing about the pi electrons we can also take it as 4n plus 2 pi electron system so the product will be a cyclic diene cyclic diene here 4n pi electrons means n is equal to 1 so as a result of which 4 into 1 plus uh, pi electron system you will see the 4 uh, pi electrons involved in the reaction at the same time in the case of uh, 1 comma 3 comma 5 hexatriene it uh, falls in the category 4n plus 2 pi electron system and here also n is equal to 1 okay if an example is seen uh, like cyclodecapentaene ring closure reaction in that case n becomes 2 so generally as per the rule no pericyclic reaction should be shown with an arrow mark but for our convenience only for our convenience so we can use the curved arrows curved arrows to show the delocalization or the migration of the pi electrons for example in this case what is happening here is one of the pi bond is shifting from c1 c2 carbon atom to c2 c3 so previously the pi bond is in between c1 and c2 carbon atom so now it is slowly migrating to c2 and c3 carbon atom whereas the other pi bond is slowly turning into a sigma bond between the c1 and c4 carbon atom in this case right so therefore you will be getting a cyclic transition state and finally the cyclic molecule so the reverse is the sigma bond here is slowly changing into a pi bond and the pi bond is changing its position so resulting in the formation of the open chain acyclic conjugated system right so here also what is happening here so these pi bonds the pi bond between first and second carbon atom 
is slowly shifting towards second and third carbon atom. The pi bond between third and fourth carbon atom is moving between 4 and 5 carbon atom and the pi bond between 5 and 6 carbon atom is converting into a sigma bond. So, this is for our convenience only to our understanding only right. So, how the pi electrons are migrating or involving in the generation of a cyclic transition state thereafter generating a new sigma bond. So, this is the new sigma bond formed. Here in this case at the expense of one pi bond you are getting a one new sigma bond. Here at the expense of again one pi bond you are getting a new sigma bond and remaining two pi bonds are changing their positions. You can see one more example here. One, two, three, four. So, how many pi bonds are there? Four pi bonds, correct, right. So, oh, which kind of system it will fall into, right? 4n pi electron system. It comes under 4n pi electron system, right. So, if the system is having either 4 electrons, 8 electrons or 12 electrons or 16 electrons, it comes under the category 4n pi electron system. So, if it is having 2 electrons or 6 electrons, 10 electrons, 14 electrons so on, it comes under the category 4n plus 2 electron system. So, this is having 8 number of pi electrons. So, it acts as a 4n system. So, what is happening here? So, the pi bonds are reorganizing and one pi bond is converted into a new sigma bond via the cyclic transition state. Any pericyclic reaction would happen through the concerted cyclic transition state only. So, how many pi electrons are involved? 8 number of pi electrons are involved. So, and it comes as 4n pi electron system. So, what will be the product here? You will get a 8 membered ring where the reorganization of pi bonds has occurred and a new sigma bond is produced. So, one thing we need to see here carefully is the stereochemistry of the pericyclic reactions, stereochemistry. Why we are talking about stereochemistry means, so when there are any substituents attached to the terminal carbon atoms, attached to the terminal carbon atoms which are involved in the formation of a new sigma bond during the course of producing a cyclic molecule, right. So, or the reverse process. So, then the stereochemistry completely will be decided by the reaction condition like the thermal condition or the photochemical condition. So, in thermal condition for the same molecule with the same substituents, you will get a stereoisomer and for the same molecule with the same substituents under photochemical conditions, you will get a different isomer, right. So, that we will slowly look into. What happens or what is required to convert an open chain acyclic conjugated system into a cyclic molecule means, we need to rotate the carbon-carbon bond, we need to rotate the carbon-carbon bond by how many degrees? 90 degrees. So, the carbon-carbon bond at the termini must be rotated 90 degrees to facilitate the linear combination of the orbitals, linear combination of the orbitals that is end on end overlapping of the orbitals. Why this has to be done means, see the carbon which is having a sigma bond, if this is one carbon atom and this is another carbon atom. 
So, if they are connected through a sigma bond, they are on the axis, internuclear axis. If they have a p orbital, the p orbital will be exactly perpendicular to the internuclear axis or the sigma bond, right. So, this is the p orbital, which already has involved in the pi bond formation, right. So, but when you initiate it for the electrocyclic ring closure or the ring opening, this pi bond has to convert into sigma bond. That means this pi bond carbon atom, the carbon atom which is having the pi bond should be rotated to 90 degrees, should be rotated to 90 degrees such that the orbitals will get a chance to overlap end on end resulting in the formation of a new sigma bond. So, for example, so, if you see this uh, example, assume that this is the four carbon atoms of the butadiene and previously there was a pi bond between C1, C2 and one more pi bond between C3 and C4. But when it comes to the cyclic transition state, what happens means these pi bonds are slowly breaking down and they have to convert into the sigma bond where the sigma bond has to be produced at the terminal carbon atoms only, right. So, these terminal carbon atoms are now showing the lobes of the p orbital, right. So, please uh, note like this blue color lobe is the positive wave function both on the top and the pink color one is the negative wave function just for our convenience just assume it. So, what I need to do to form a sigma bond means, so I need to turn the carbon carbon bond right by 90 degrees, you see. So, previously they were like this and now I turned rotated them by 90 degrees, now they came into this land. Similarly, this carbon atom should also be rotated by 90 degrees. Then if both the wave functions are same, they undergo additive overlapping and results in the formation of a new sigma bond, right. So, if I rotate it in a different way, if the wave functions both at the terminal carbon atoms are not the same, then they result in the formation of an antibonding molecular orbital. So, which is not going to give you a sigma bond. That means, the rotations will tell you the allowedness or forbiddenness of the particular reaction under a particular reaction condition, right. So, we need to look into the homo molecular orbitals of all the participants acyclic uh, conjugated systems under thermal conditions for the bond formation. So, the reactions in thermal conditions will always happen in the ground state. So, the ground state HOMO should be taken for the bond formation or for deciding the stereochemistry in all the acyclic molecules under thermal condition. Whereas in the photochemical conditions as discussed in the previous classes, so photochemical conditions happen in the first excited state. So, then the HOMO will also change. So, according to the HOMO you are seeing in the photochemical condition in the first excited state, you have to see whether the reaction is feasible or not, right. So, for any ways either in the thermal condition or in the photochemical condition, one thing is for sure we need to do that is the rotation of the carbon-carbon bond by 90 degrees at the terminal carbon atoms, right. So, the rotations, bond rotations are of two types. One is con mode of rotation, the other is dis mode of rotation. So, what is this con rotatory and what is this dis rotatory or con mode of rotation or dis mode of rotation means, if both the terminal carbon atoms are rotated in the same direction. For example, so this is the pi orbital of the carbon atom at the terminal. If I am rotating this in the clockwise direction and this also in the clockwise direction, that tells you that 
both the rotations at the terminal carbon atoms are same, they are clockwise only. If I rotate this anticlockwise direction and this one also anticlockwise direction, so we take this as same kind of rotation, right. So, if both the termini are doing the same side rotations, both the termini are doing the same side rotations, that means either completely clockwise on either ends and or anticlockwise at both the ends. So, it treated it is treated as con mode of rotations, right. So, you can see like this, the first carbon atom, I am taking the example of 1,3 butadiene, this is C1 and this is C4, right. So, at the C1 carbon atom, I am making the clockwise rotation. So, this is clockwise, right. At the C4 also, I am making the clockwise mode of rotation. So, both the termini are showing the same type, same direction of rotations. So, this is con rotatory mode, this is con rotatory mode. So, if I rotate them anti-clockwise direction, the first carbon atom C1 and also the fourth carbon atom also in the anti-clockwise direction. So, this is also con rotatory, this is clockwise. This is anti clockwise. If both the terminal carbon atoms are rotated in the same direction, it is con rotatory mode of rotations. And in contrary to that, so if the first carbon atom is clockwise and the fourth carbon atom or the last carbon atom is anti clockwise is this mode of rotation, this mode of rotation. That means, if these two are the lobes on the terminal carbon atoms, the first carbon atom I am rotating in the clockwise 90 degrees, but this uh, terminal carbon atom, fourth carbon atom of the 13 butadiene, I am rotating in the opposite direction, anti-clockwise. See, closely understand, so this is clockwise and this is anti-clockwise, right. Or this is anti-clockwise and this is clockwise. So, this is also this mode of rotation. So, you have to perform the rotations for sure at the terminal carbon atoms. How you are performing only matters. So, if you are rotating both the terminal carbon atoms in the same direction, either clockwise or anti-clockwise, so it is con mode of rotation. If one is clockwise and the other is anti-clockwise or this is clockwise, anti-clockwise and this is clockwise is this mode of rotations, okay. So, this is clockwise and this is anti-clockwise or you can also show like this is anti-clockwise and this is clockwise, right. So, this type of rotations are must to form the new sigma bond or to break the sigma bond. So, this is about the rotations you need to perform at the terminal carbon atoms. Based on these rotations, the stereochemistry of the participating molecule at the termini will be decided, at the termini will be decided. If you simply take an unsubstituted 1,3 butadiene which is having only hydrogens. So, this carbon is having two hydrogens and this is also having two hydrogens. In order to perform the reaction, if I rotate this carbon atom clockwise and this carbon atom also clockwise, you cannot distinguish the stereochemistry before and after the electrocyclic reactions, okay. So, this will give you this one only, the product hydrogen, hydrogen, hydrogen the hydrogen. So, this is the product. You cannot distinguish any stereochemistry there, okay. But if I change one of the hydrogen atoms with a different substituent, for example, I am introducing methyl group here and there is a hydrogen here. The same 
methyl group here and a hydrogen here. So now what is happening here? This is 2 comma 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, right. So this is 2 comma 4 diene, hexa diene. So this if I perform the clockwise rotations on the first carbon atom of the pi bond and here. So both the terminal carbon atoms are undergoing clockwise rotations, right. So what will happen? This methyl group which is actually in the plane after clockwise rotation it is going down, after clockwise rotation it is going down and here this methyl group which is also in the plane after clockwise rotation will go down, right. So you can see here. So if I rotate this carbon atom, this methyl group previously in the plane, it will go down, it will come down. So this methyl group also will come down. So what will be the product if you see? So methyl is coming down and this methyl is coming down, right. So again cis mode of thing is observed here. In the other case, for the same type of molecule, if I perform this mode of rotations, this carbon atom I am rotating in the clockwise direction and this carbon atom I am rotating in the anti-clockwise direction. So the product will show this kind of stereochemistry. So this methyl obviously will go down because I am rotating in the clockwise direction. So here you will see. This one as I am rotating it in the anti-clockwise direction will come up so like this. Right. So what we have preliminarily understood that, so based on the performance of rotations at the terminal carbon atoms of an conjugated polyene, so the stereochemistry will be decided, stereochemistry of the product will be decided, right. So now we will see clearly for the four types of uh, rotation, con and dis in the same molecule. Now here in this case, if you observe, in the first example, there are some substituents at the terminal carbon atoms of the conjugation and both of them are in the same direction, right. So this is looking this way and this is also looking in this direction. Here in this case, if you observe, the substituents are looking in the opposite direction. This is looking in this direction and this is looking in this direction, right. So now we will perform con rotations and dis rotations on both the types, okay. So if you perform the con rotation here, what is going to happen? So con rotation means what? Either both clockwise or both anti-clockwise. Let us do clockwise on both the sides. What is happening? 
this R and R on the same side, groups are on the same side, same side groups, substituents on con rotation, what we are performing is con mode of rotation. So, what you will get in the product, both the groups are again on the same side, that is cis you get, okay. So, if I perform the con rotations on the molecule, where the substituent groups are opposite to each other. This is this direction and that is that direction opposite to each other. So, if I perform con rotation here, what is going to happen? So, con rotation means again what? Both sides either clockwise or both sides either anti-clockwise. So, I am doing clockwise rotation here both sides. So, this R on con rotation, this is like this on con rotation will go up and this is like this on con rotation will go down, right. So, what you will see in the product, sorry, this R is coming up, this R is coming down. So, you will get trans interaction between these two terminal carbon atoms. When you see this, here also again the both substituents are on the same direction. So, they are looking in the same direction. Perform this mode of rotations here, this, this means what? One terminal carbon atom should be clockwise and the other should be anti-clockwise or vice versa, right. So, whichever is convenient, we will do that. This first carbon atom, I am doing the clockwise mode of rotation and the second uh, carb uh, terminal carbon atom, I am doing anti-clockwise direction, right. So, that is the dis mode of orientation. So, here in both cases, we did con mode of rotations. Here, we will perform the dis mode of rotations. So, this is moving in the clockwise direction and the functional group or the substituent is looking this side on clockwise rotation it will come down. This one is again like this same direction, but as it is this mode already at the first carbon atom you have performed the clockwise rotation. So, in the last terminal uh, conjugated uh, carbon atom you have to perform it in the anti-clockwise direction, right. So, then if it is there and anti-clockwise rotation will lift this group on the top side. So, what you can see in the product is, so this are coming up and this substituent are going down. So, what is the interaction here? It is trans and again here perform the dis mode of rotations. So, what is that? One clockwise and the other anti-clockwise. How the groups are looking to each other? So, they are opposite to each other. One is looking this side and the other is oriented that side, opposite to each other, right. So, on this mode of rotation, what is happening here? This is the substituent on clockwise rotation it is coming up this uh, side and this is here on anti-clockwise rotation again this is coming up, okay. So, what we will see in the product is both the substituents coming on the same side and cis interaction, right. So, how do you conclude now? So, we have seen the possibilities, all the four possibilities. Same side groups on con rotation will give you the product with the substituents on the same side. Same side groups, groups are on same side, 
on con-rotation that means same direction of rotations is giving you the substituents in the product also on the same side. Say opposite side groups, the groups are opposite side, but you are performing the rotations con, con rotations, con mode of rotations that means same direction of rotations, you will get opposite only, the groups will be opposite to each other only, right, trans orientation will be seen. So, opposite side groups on con rotation opposite, same side groups on con rotation same side. Right. So, come to here. So, same side groups on dis rotation, same on dis rotation is giving you opposite. Same side groups on dis rotation is giving you the opposite orientation. And opposite side groups, groups are opposite to each other, away from each other. On this, if you perform dis mode of orientation, rotation, you will get same side in the products, same side in the products. So, this is little bit confusing. So, if you understand uh, the mode of rotations and the substituent direction, so it will be as easy as anything to get the products stereochemistry, to find out the products stereochemistry, right. So, on conclusion, what we will say, same side groups. in the reactants. So, this is reactants and here products, right. So, same side, when it is happening. So, in the reactants, it is on same side, on what kind of mode of rotations is allowing the groups to retain their uh, you know stereochemistry in the products also. You see here, here same side groups are there on con rotation it is giving the same side groups, right. Con mode of rotation. Same side groups. are becoming opposite side sometimes, when it is happening, hmm? same side groups are becoming opposite, see here, yeah. So, the groups are oriented on the same side at the terminal carbon atoms of the conjugated system and this mode it is becoming opposite, right. So, what is happening here, on this mode they are turning in opposite direction. Now, opposite side groups on con mode of rotation, what is happening? And opposite side groups on this mode of rotation, what is happening? You just examine here. So, opposite side of groups are there, the groups are opposite side on the terminal carbon atoms of the conjugated system and performing the con mode, so they are opposite only, trans only in the product also. So, opposite side on con rotation will give you opposite side substituents in the product also. Opposite side groups on this mode of rotation, you see here, so this is the this mode of rotation. So, what is happening? They are coming in the same side, right. So, you will see the same side of groups, orientation of the groups. So, this gives you the stereochemistry uh, understanding of the electrocyclic reactions. In the next class, what we will do? We will bring uh, this type of molecular models and we will see what is happening with the substituents also, right. So, and then we will elaborately see why this is happening. According to the frontier molecular theory approach or FMO approach, so how it is justified also we will see in the next class. Thank you.